So in this lab, uh, we are going to see that how we can manually edit the MongoDB data uh, with MongoDB campers. So again, campers is the GUI for MongoDB, so which provides great, uh, uh, very simple interface that you can query the data. And also, if you like, you can also manually edit the data. So once we open um, start the campers, uh, so it will require a new connection. So by default, it's asking for SRV uh, string connection. So let's not do that. So let's switch to the so that we want to fill in the connection fields individually. Okay, and so this is the host name. So again, you can find out the host name on Canvas. Um, and also make sure that we are enable this SRV record, okay? And for this authentication, so we will use the username password. And this is where you are going to type your username. Again, this is the username that I posted on Canvas uh, group discussion. So for example, if you are group one and you should put your um, password for your group one and if you are group two you are using the username group two and also you put the password in the group two so those are the same password that we used uh, for the post GA circle uh, labs okay so here I'm using my username which is demo and I'm going to type my demo password uh, for this authentication database so we leave this one as default so which is admin so we leave that one as default and let's hit connect okay um, so here you can see there are multiple databases okay uh, so you can see on the left side you have um, each user has each own database so for example I'm in the demo I'm the demo user, so I can create uh, collections within a demo database. Okay, and also within the collections, I can also insert the new data. So, for example, let's say here I want to insert a document. Okay, and uh, let's switch to this string format. So, um, by default, MongoDB will always give you a unique object ID so that you cannot change uh, so now you can type the key value key value pairs uh, for your first document so for example here I'm typing okay so my uh, first key and for this value you can choose so is that a list a binary boolean uh, integer double date etc or is that a nested document or is that a string okay uh, so by default it is a string so let's say my first key let's say um key one okay and now you can click the insert you can insert another uh, key value pairs here let's say my second key uh, for this one, let's say we want to use an integer. Okay, so integer. So let's say 10. Uh, we can continue adding. Let's say my list. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for this type, let's say we are going to use a list. Um, so it's list. And so the first item, so that is item A. Okay, and we continue. So now we want adding an uh, item for this list. Okay, so item two. Okay, and for each item within list, you can have nested structure of course. So for example, for this one, let's say we want to add another document. So let's say um, it's called an object. Okay, so here I call it uh, item uh, three okay so the third item itself in this list we is another document so let's see item three value okay uh, 
you can continue keep adding. So for example here, let's say we want to add another element after this list. Oop, uh, we want to add another item after this list. So that should be second one. So add another new field. Uh, for this one, let's say uh, we want to my nested document key. Okay, and for this document, for this value, so let's say we use uh, an, another key value, key value pairs. So let's say uh, for first key value pair, so let's say nested key one. Okay value one, uh, let's continue, nested k2 and value two. Okay, and now if you are happy with this document, you, just, you can just simply insert. Okay, uh, so now we have our first document, which is inserted into this demo documents, uh, demo collection, sorry, which belong to this demo uh, database. And we, for this collection, so remember collection is something that's similar to tables. So within this collection, let's insert another new document. Um, so remember that so MongoDB is non-SQL database. So that means the stru structure of each single item can be different. So for example, for this one, we still have the my first key. Okay, which I say key one. And let's add another one. So let's say here uh, I will have my uh, different key. Okay. Okay. So you can see this one, this key is something new on the second uh, document, was not, this one is not on the first document. And let's see, key two. Okay, k different. Okay, so that's a key value. Let's insert. Now you can see it is working. Okay, uh, and also actually you can also insert another one. So that actually not necessarily to have those my first k. You can see let's say um, you can see any thing. Okay anything key, okay, and the value can be any values. Okay, so you can see now we inserted three documents into this demo collection. However, all the documents are having different structures. So they have different key value pairs, and they also have different, you know, um, data type. Okay. Uh, you can also do the filter. Okay, so for example, if you say find Okay, all you can see that my actually first k equals uh, k1 I believe that should be within a covered bracket Okay, so that is a, a, a filter so that here I just want to find out the documents that uh, contains my first key. Oh, here I have a typo, so it should be my first key, uh, which is key one. Let me um, add it to this one as well. So, okay, and update. Okay. So here, let's say I only want to find out the documents which have this my first key and also the value is key one. So let's say find. Okay, so now you can see I just filled out the last one. So I, it returned those two. Okay. Uh, so we will talk more about the filters and also there are also more options that later on the MongoDB queries. Um, and also we will we will also talk about the aggregations later on. Uh, schema is a way that can help you quickly uh, visualize your schema. So this is probably the uh, the best feature that I like I like on campus. So on Atlas you can you don't have this uh, very simple visualization. 
explain is used to evaluate the performance of the query, so which we'll talk later. Uh, indexes is that all the indexes that uh, has been created on this uh, collection. So right now we can see the underscore ID is only one that has index because that is a unique identifier uh, for this collection. And also you can of course define different rules uh, as validations. Okay, uh, so that is how to insert, manually insert the documents. Uh, you can also create new collections. So for example, if you choose your database, you can see here I have a demo collection, uh, which should have three documents. I don't know why the, uh, it may take a while to uh, to refresh the result. Okay, but the demo definitely now has uh, three documents and also one index, one index. So here, let's say we want to create a new collection and you can call it demo2. Okay. Now you can see we just created a new collection that is demo2 and again, you can just insert document or you can just load the data from existing JSON files. You can of course uh, drop this collection. So that is just delete this collection. Uh, so demo2, so they just require that you need to um, update this one, let's say drop. Okay, so I just delete uh, the documents. I don't think you can delete the database or you can create a database. So let me try it. Right, you don't, uh, you are not allowed to create a database or delete a database. And also make sure you are working on your own uh, database. So for example, if I want to make some change for a different user. So remember, I logged in with my demo account. So I should not have access to the GP1 uh, database, uh, database. So if I'm trying to insert a document, let's see here. And if I try insert again, I don't, I'm not allowed to do that. Uh, okay. So you can also uh, visualize the other databases. Uh, so for example, let's say the Airbnb, which has one uh, collection that has 5,000 documents, which we saw that one during the lecture demo, and it has uh, four indexes. So if we click that one, and you can see here we have those documents. Okay, so we have those very nice documents. And you can check the uh, aggregation, which we'll talk later. Uh, you can analyze the schema. So this one has more, more, more than 5,000 documents. So let's say we want to analyze a schema. Okay. And now we will see a very nice visualizations of the documents. So that is something that I really like. So let's hit an analyze. Okay, uh, it took a while that uh, to see those results. So you can see the IDs. So those are string format. So those are just some random IDs. Access. So uh, it also has access uh, key. If you go back, you can see that uh, it has access. Okay, which is a string. And if you look at the schemas, you can see. Uh, uh, 43% of access is empty string. Okay. And now you can see the other access. So the value of the other access. Um, accommodates. So accommodates are numbers. So if you look at the document, okay, uh, let's see, show all the fields. You can see accommodates. So basically, I guess that is how many people you can accommodate. And also number of bedrooms, bathrooms. So now if we go to the schema and we can see that 37% of the records, they can accommodate two people. 10% can accommodate three people. Okay. And also addresses. Okay. So address contains the countries. Okay. We can say majority of the records are in United States. Okay, Hong Kong and also Turkey. 
uh, country code US. Um, I'm not sure this country code. Um, and also government area. Okay. So those are different government areas. And this is also a very nice thing that I like is that so for those coordinates, so if you do have coordinates that uh, fit with the right format, so you can visualize those on the maps. Okay, so for example, if I zoom in, okay, and I can see those records that in, in New York. Okay, and also market. Okay, New York market, uh, streets, those are all belong to the uh, belong to this address. Okay, and also availability, which is a uh, um, nested documents where you have this those multiple key value pairs. Okay, uh, and also bad type, and we can see majority of the records are real bad. We do have some uh, pull out so far, and also numbers of bedrooms, and you can see that um, most of the records that they have one bedroom. Okay, and most records have one bed. And calendar last crept, so that is a date format. So that's why that you can uh, you can view the data in different range actually. Okay. So Monday, Tuesday, etc., and also uh, time of the day, etc. Okay, and also you can see that day of the year. Okay, um, and also one nice thing is that when you click those bars, let's see if I click select this one. Uh, Okay, let's say we select the bedroom equals one. I'm not sure why this one is not working. Um, okay, yeah, it, it should you should click the time bar. Okay, anyway, so if those are highlighted, uh, you can see those will be automatically filled out in those filters. So here I see I want the records who have one bed, and also I click this tiny bar, so I want uh, this time that equals to this specific time and now if I hit analyze okay and actually there's no document oh, okay. oh, there are 200 records that fit with this filter okay so this is a way that you can interactively fill out the data okay so let's remove that one and see all the results and sometimes if you have too many documents and the report will only give you a sample of the results. So for example, here we have 5,000 records, 5,000 documents. Those visualizations are created based on 1,000 documents. So it is not the entire data records. And speak of the interactive query. So if you remember that uh, we have the map nice map and actually we can also query based on map so here for example um, now we are looking at the the points that in in New York so if I create a circle and and now you can see we create a filter that we see within this range we want all the records that within this range and now if I hit analyze Okay, and so we have to be a little bit patient. Okay, and so it returned 600 records. And if we look at the, uh, I think if we look at the uh, address and also uh, country, we can see all of them are in United States. Okay, that is because all of them are in New York. And now you can see the government areas in New York. Okay, uh, so that is for the schema analysis. Uh, explain will be used to um, evaluate the performance, as I said. Or uh, you can see what indexes that uh, they have already built. So you can see they have the ID, 
they do have the geospatial index, which is pretty nice. And I don't think all the relational database will support this one. Uh, they have the regular two other two regular indexes. And for the last one, it is a compound index. So that means when you make queries that together, so based on the property type, room type, and also beds. So if you're making queries uh, for all three together, so that will be very, very fast. Uh, you can try to play other uh, sample data. So for example, the zip code, trips, etc. This one has multiple collections. You can see they have number of documents, uh, etc. Uh, so you can try to make queries. And again, I think uh, for your account, um, you cannot make any updates, delete, or, in, or insert on those databases. OK, uh, so finally, so let's go back to our demo database. And in your case, you should use whichever database that you created. Uh, so we are going to create a cost collection. So let's create a new collection. And we call it RA cost. So for this I cost connection collection, uh, we are going to manually input uh, our uh, I cost info. So which includes um, the cost name, cost number, the classroom number, and also we also want the inst infra instructor's information, like the instructor's name, office, emails, and also we want at least five enrolled students' info. And for those students' info, those should be dummy information, so uh, you should not provide the real information. So before you add in data, so you need to think about that, how you're going to organize uh, the structure of those um, of, of this collection. So you can pause your video here and you can use um, paper and a pen and also design that what what key value pairs you want to use and also what data type you want to use for each key uh, each values. OK, uh, so here I'm going to give you my uh, solution. So let's say let's say I want to insert the first document. Um, so it's already have default key value key values. So I will put the name as uh, my first key. So for example, name is date mining. Hit enter. The second one is uh, the cost number and tag, and also this is I three forty and also classroom. Uh, so this one, I'm also using a string. So this will be online. And next will be the instructor. So the type of the inst instructor. So here I'm going to use a document. OK, so I'm going to use a nested document where I will say the instructor name. So name will equals my name. Office, uh, my office HHS112, and my email, which is wrxx at gmu.edu. Okay, so I will use a nested document to store the information about the instructor. Uh, next, I'm going to insert the students. Okay, so this will be student, and for this student, so here. We, we, we will have multiple students. So here I'm going to use a list. And for the first student, the value of the first student, I'm going again use a nested document. OK, so here I want to that a name. So S1 email S1 at gmu.edu. OK. And let's me add the second item. So that is add another item after object. So the second item student, which is also a nasty document, which I have name as one email. Oh, sorry, the name should be S2. So it should be a different students. Um, S2 
at gmail.edu. Okay, and let me insert. Okay, and so now I have my first class, which is data mining. Okay, and now let's create our second um, um, documents. And actually for the second one, so because, I mean, non-relational database, I mean, the structure can be flexible. However, uh, the best practice is that you should not insert totally different structure so otherwise that will be a headache so you should should have slightly the same structure so here i decide to use the similar structure for my second course document so so to make it easier i simply uh, copy this one so i just call in this document and here i you see here i will change those information a little bit so for example the name so this one i call it I'm also teaching uh, machine learning. And that is I480. Okay. And so I'm also the, the instructor, so I don't need to change the name, etc. Uh, however, the students, so for example, for this one, I do have S1 enrolled, and I don't ha I have I don't have S2 enrolled. So for example, this one, I can say, I can delete. Okay. And next, let's say insert. Okay. Um, so now you can see uh, I have my second course record, uh, which I have only one student, which S1 got enrolled. Okay. And later on, for example, if you have uh, more students and you can always update this one. So let's see, I can insert another student, um, which is also an object, which I say, okay, name, I call it S3. Suppose you want to insert a new one and email and S3 at gmail.edu and actually I just find out the typo here okay I update um, which means I also have a typo here so okay so let's update okay uh, so now we can let's say we want to make some queries so for example I want to find out where the instructor Okay, the name of the instructor is myself. So now if I see find, okay, it is case sensitive. Okay, you can see instructor dot name is my name. And if I want to see the students, okay, so I say student name equals I want the S3, okay, which is a uh, that enrolled. So if I say find, and now I say okay, student that enrolled into this one, okay. And if you want to analyze the schema, so it's pretty simple. So everything is online, and we only have one professor, okay. And for the students. Okay, so we do have multiple students. Okay, and if you want to see that the, the class that students one enrolled, so you can just click S1, and also you click Analyze, and it will return all the course that student one enrolled. And then finally, so if you log into Atlas, so if you want to double check, if you go to Collections, and let's say we go to our collection, which is demo. And you can also check your collections after you finish this lab. Uh, so let's see our collection. So now we can see those records has been, is, we can also see those records on Atlas.